Hey guys, let's talk bumpers. So in our last video, we covered how to basically put together the whole West Coast drivetrain, right? And in this video, I want to talk about how how we CAD bumpers and bumper support because that's obviously a very important part of the FRC drivetrain, and you need that in order to to actually compete, right? So in order to understand how to CAD bumpers, we first have to go over the basic rules that are going to be in most past year's game manuals, and I'm I'm pretty sure that it's going to be pretty consistent in the future too, but it could change. So let's look at the um, our team's 2019 drive base. And this year, the rules were pretty similar to the rules in the past, where your bumper has to be entirely supported by metal, which we can see there's metal uh, all along here. And this whole bumper um, needs to be within like their size limitations. So all that means is that at minimum, you can have six inches of bumper from your corner. So let me sketch that real quick to show you guys what I'm talking about. So the absolute minimum bumper you could have is a bumper that looks like this, right? Right, and then this would be six inches, and then this would be six inches. This is the absolute minimum bumper you could have, and then that would be on every corner. So here, here, and here. And another one of the rules which has changed in the past is like the minimum you can have between corners, or sorry, the maximum you can have. So for example, on our drivetrain, the distance from here to here was about 18.5 inches. Um, I think the limit is 20 inches. So you can't exceed that gap, which is which is for pretty good reasons, because if you have something bigger than 20 inches, there's a good chance that another robot could either damage your frame, or you could damage their frame, right? Now let's take a look at what the bumper is actually constructed of. You can't tell too well in the CAD, but essentially this bumper is constructed of two pool noodles stacked on top of each other, and it's backed by some wood. This is standard in all like FRC rules, sorry, FRC rules, because, I don't know, it's just like a safety thing, right? You have the soft padding backed up by wood. So let's do another sketch real quick. These bumper noodles, sorry, this is an awful sketch. Here, where's that one? Let's take a look. So there's two bumper or pool noodles stacked on top of each other, right? All pool, no pool noodles that you can buy at like Walmart or Meyer or Target or Tom Thumb or like, I don't even know where you might live, but um, all pool noodles are gonna be 2.5 inches in diameter, right? So stacked on top of each other, your whole bumper is going to be 5 inches tall. And then this wood that's over here, this is regulated to be 3 quarters of an inch thick. So that's the first thing we're going to be catting is the bumper itself. And then we're going to get into how to make the bumper support, which is going to go here. So for the bumper, the, the bumper itself, the wood and the pool noodle, the first thing we need to figure out is the frame size so we can work around and basically figure out how much wood we need and how much pool noodle we need, right? So let's take a look at the West Coast Drive we've been working on. We're, I'm just going to quickly measure this because I don't remember how big this was. 24, and then let's do another measurement from the, I'm going from the very outside of the frame. All right, 24 by 20 inches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new part. Um, let's do a new part here. And the tool we're gonna be using to make this whole pool noodle situation is gonna be um, is gonna be called the sweep tool. So if we pop it over to the 3D model, we're gonna be using this tool here. And it'll make sense in a second, but essentially what we're doing is we're taking the profile of the pool noodles and the wood and sweeping it along a path that we want. So let's start by making making the pool noodle profile, or the bumper profile. All it is is two pool noodles stacked on top of each other. So let's quickly go ahead and do that. Make these tangent to each other. Now you can see this is green because it's moving around. So I'm just going to connect this with the line construction. 
It's construction because um, this is not going to be part of the final product. Let's tell Inventor to make this line vertical. Looks good. Now let's add the wood. So the wood is going to be 3 quarters of an inch by 5 inches tall. Oh, this is construction on accident. So let's highlight it. Right click, construction, remove that. I'll get rid of that up here. Now let's make these sides tangent. Okay. Now what we're going to do is show how the fabric is wrapped around the pool noodle, right? So let's take a line and connect it like this. So we need to take a look at why this line is green. If I click on this point at the bottom, I can see why it's moving, right? So all I have to do is tell Inventor to make this line tangent to the circle. That looks good. So we've now made the profile of our pool noodle, right? Or the profile of our bumper. And that includes the wood here and our actual pool noodle on this side. What we want to do now is if we take a look at the sweep tool, we want to sweep this whole uh, this whole bumper profile along a path. And the way it needs to be done is by, if you look at the picture, you can see that the red line is connecting to the corner of the drawing, right? So that's what we need to do. We need to somehow create a path and connect it to this point. So now normally we would start a 2D sketch on a plane, right? But there's no planes to be found. What we need to do is open up the origin. We can take a look at the Y, Z, X, X, Z, and X, Y plane. And what we can do is we can take this XZ plane and shift it upwards to meet this point. So what we're going to do is go to this plane drop down here, offset from plane. So I want this XZ plane, which I already highlighted earlier, and I'm just going to do half the height of this pool noodle, which is going to be 2.5 divided by 2, or 1.2, or 1.25. And I can see that this plane intersects the lines at the top. Let's go ahead and make a sketch on that plane. You can't click the inside of this orange, you have to click on the edge. Okay, now right now Inventor thinks that absolutely nothing exists. There's no points, no lines. You can highlight the numbers, but to Inventor it doesn't mean anything. Remember, whenever we start a new sketch on a either 3D extruded part or on like a 2D sketch, the first thing we need to do is project geometry, right? So, we're going to project geometry at this point, because that's the point we're going to be working off of. Now we need to create the profile. So we have a few options, depending on what we want to make. If we want um, a bumper that's the absolute minimum, we could go 6 inches like this, and then 6 inches like this, right? But I don't want the minimum. I want, I want something that like wraps around like this, right? So what I want is like six inches on this side, this full length, and then six inches on this side. So this full length is 24 inches, right? So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on this, make this 24. Hit escape. Let's add six inches to this side. Okay. Now you can imagine that if we took this profile and wrapped it around this path we would get like a whole section of bumper. Let's go ahead and do that. Hit the sweep tool. The first thing it asks is for a profile, right? So we're gonna select the profile, which is gonna be our bumper. And then select a curve. That curve is gonna be this path here. Now it's very important for our orientation, we select this, it's guide. It basically means it goes around corners. So if you click that, it should, it should give you a preview. Hopefully this works. Alright, this does not want to work. So, this is troubleshooting Inventor. It's all good. This happens to everyone. Okay, maybe not everyone. Maybe it's just me, but whatever. Um, it's asking me to select a rail or... What does it ask me to do? Guys, this is just part of the process, I swear. Select a rail or surface to guide and scale the sweep shape. I believe this should be it, right? Oh, okay. I guess the first option also works. So if you click on the first option, it wraps around just the way I want it. 
Okay, okay. Um, yeah, sure, I don't really care. Okay, now we have this segment of bumper. And now just to make it look nice, we can fill out these edges. Um, let's fill it to one inch. Or maybe, yeah, one inch looks pretty good. Okay. Alright, that looks pretty nice. Actually, I'm going to change this to make it a very right angle fillet. I'm going to change this to 1.5. Or 1.25. Yeah, 1.25. So I get that nice 90 degree corner. Alright, this looks good. So we can save this as part of our bumper now. If you want to get like um, these nice colors and wood patterning, pattern, you will need to break it up into two parts. So one where you just make the wood on its own, and then one where you sweep the pool noodles on its own, and then you can color the parts individually. But for now, like, this is the fastest and most effective way to do it, so we're going to stick with this. Right. So let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to make a new folder just for bumpers, because there's going to be a lot of parts when we do mounting. Let's do uh, bumper noodle and wood. Okay, um, this looks pretty good. So let's add it to our assembly. We're going to assemble, place these. I'm going to rotate it. All right, constraints should be pretty easy. Let's do, this face is gonna be pressed up against here. And then this face is gonna be pressed up against this side. And same situation here, right? Now, the hardest thing to determine in terms of bumpers is how high to, to mount it. The rules vary year to year, but for now, I'm just going to do something where the bottom side is just flush with the base of the Versa frame. That's what we're going to do for now, but some years do actually require you to make it like exactly one inch off the ground or maybe half an inch off the ground. The rules vary year to year, so make sure you check that, but that's what we're going to do for now is just make it flush with the bottom side. Make that flush like this. Okay, so now we have our like our like wood and pool noodle on the frame, but obviously this wouldn't work in real life because there's nothing to actually mount it to. So what we need to make next is all like these metal supports that we can actually attach the wood to, right? And that's gonna be the little bit more time consuming part of this CAD video, so Put on your seatbelts, guys, and get ready. Um, one thing you guys might notice is that the wheel is, like, running into the bumper. That's all right. If that happens, you can, like, shave down the wood in that area um, and make it fit. But realistically, you won't have to worry about this simply because the wood is probably not going to be pressed up right against your axle just because of these mounting bars. So think about it in real life. The wood can't directly mount to this. You need like some kind of L brackets that you can hand drill into the wood and then mount on top of this rail. That is, that's what's going to basically put your whole frame together. And when you do that, that C channel or that L bracket that you mount onto this rail is going to offset your wood just enough so it doesn't run into the wheel. So really, you should be okay. Um, let's now take a look at how we need to mount these, or get like all the metal supports done. We're going to start with the ends, and so that's going to be this piece here, and the plate that connects to the drivetrain frame, right? Um, I'm going to delete one for now, just to make it easier to look at. So what we need is a piece of burst frame here, and then a plate to connect it, right? So in order to connect... Um, the plate in the first place, what we need is some more mounting holes, so let's go ahead and add that. We're going to use a pretty standard pattern. Um, what I'm going to do is make some lines like this. 
right? And then I can define how high I want them. We're just going to do really simple numbers, make it really easy on the fab kids. And then we're going to do 3 16 holes. 3 16 is enough for a number 10 bolt. Great, it's construction. Let's take that out. Okay, now let's tell. Ah, oh, great. Let's get rid of that. Now I'm going to define. Let's do 0.5 inches away. Okay. Let's do two sets. Let's do. Um, yeah, that should be enough, right? Let's do a rectangular pattern in this direction. Flip that direction over. Um, actually, what I want to do is just to add more. Actually, this should be okay. Now, let's put it on the other side. Just to save time, what we're going to do is do a line construction straight down the middle. And then just mirror that boy. Let's do these. Or not all of these. These. So the reason I can't highlight it in green is because it'll pick these lines as well. If I just highlight it in red, like that. Yeah, it should work now. My mirror line is this. Yes. So let's extrude these. Cut extrude these. Oh, come on. Yep, that looks good to me. I know just to check, we can go back to our drive train. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now we have mounting holes to work with. So, next thing we want to do is create this piece of verse frame that goes on top of here, right? And it starts with trying to figure out how tall it needs to be. So let's do a quick inspect, measure. We want this to be three inches away from the edge, right? So that means our, our whole like verse frame block needs to be three inches tall. So let's go ahead and create a piece of verse frame that big. Uh, I'm gonna go really fast because it's verse frame. It shouldn't be that complicated. So I'm just gonna speed through this real quick. Well, I'm making the holes 3 sixteenths. Um, on Vex Pro, they're actually 0 0.6163. But we would make them bigger. We'd, we'd make it a 3 16 hole because that's what we use. We'd just like drill it out by hand. So this is the piece of verse frame that we're going to use. Let's save this real quick. I'm going to call this end verse frame support. Okay. Now let's add it to our assembly just for a better visual. We want this right. Um, let's do a quick rotation. Uh, I cannot see the screen. All right, we want one here and then one on this end. Let's do some quick constraints. Again, very, very basic face constraints, right? You can go from here to here. And then here to here. Flush constraints, really simple. I'm not going to explain these in too much detail. And then we just want this, like, on our bumper, so we'll just make it touch um, that's not very nice we're going to shift that out 
Great. Now, the next one we want to create, before I add the rail that goes across this whole thing, what I'm going to add is, um, is like the other pieces of first frame that fit in between the wheels. So this is what I'm talking about. So in this situation, we made it really complicated. We used like a bunch of like 16th inch plates and VersaFrame simply because these tires are really freaking big. So what we're going to do in this scenario is a lot simpler. All we have to do is make these blocks and then add an additional two inches to account for like the height of this VersaFrame. So what I'm talking about is if I measure the distance from the height here, to the base, it's going to be 5 inches, right? All I have to do is make 5 inch pieces of these and insert them between the wheels. Let's just go ahead and do that. It'll make sense in just a second. I'll do a quick file, save as, and I'm going to call them, what's it, between wheels. So, you know, just something kind of descriptive. And then all I have to do is edit this extrusion to 5 inches. Ah, uh, what I did here is, rookie mistake, I patterned it in the sketch instead of patterning the extrusion. So, I'm actually going to fix that, just to show you guys what not to do. This is, this is very bad, no, that's a no-no. Here, um, can I delete the pattern? Yeah. Let's do, or <coughs> like this. Direction, you need to select an edge, you cannot select a face. Um, and we want five of these boys. Alright, save this. And let's import it straight into here. Um, I'm going to go quick with the constraints because I don't want to extend this video any longer than it has to be. Um, it should be pretty pretty easy to understand. Flush constraint to make it flush with the top. Okay. Let's do that on this side first, actually. And then make constraint to make it touch the verse frame. Now, um, the hard part is like trying to figure out how far away we want it. What I like to do is do like a guesstimate, and then I'll just measure the distance in between here and here, and I'll just take like a nice whole number. So this is like 6.271. It's probably 6.25, but I like it lined up. So let's, if I line it up with this hole, let's see what I get. Six inches. That's what I'm going to do. So let's do a constraint that's offset six inches. And then we'll mirror on this side. Now, right now, these pieces of VersaFrame are kind of floating in space. There's, they're not attached to anything, right? Like this is not bolted down, this is not bolted down, this is not bolted down. Nothing is bolted down. And that's what we need to do next. The way this is bolted down is through a plate that connects these holes with this piece. And then this is bolted down simply through holes in the VersaFrame here. So let's start with this one. All we have to do is open this up and start a 2D sketch on here. Now let's take a look at what we did. We had so I'm I'm a real you can do this mathematically, but I'm really visual with when I CAD. So I'm gonna project geometry and make it just like the model. I have a piece of versa frame that's one by what? Like five inches? Yeah. So one by five. So these represent that that piece of versa frame, right? All I have to do is um, define how far away it is from the side. And I, it was 6 inches, right? That's what we did, 6 inches. But I'll just check that. Yeah, 6 inches. Well, yeah, it's 6 inches from the inside. So let's do 6 inches. Now this helps us define where the holes are in the VersaFrame. 
Now, of course, we know that we have 3 16 holes here. That's just patterned upward. The escape. This is basically what the Versa frame is, right? But these are only, we only need to make these two holes in the drive train to actually bolt it down. Let's do the same thing on this side. Um, excuse me. Why is it not letting me do this? Oh, I'm just clicking the line at the bottom. Profile, direction. Okay, so now we just have to extrude these four holes. Pretty, pretty simple. Uh, one inch should be enough. Yeah. Let's save this. Make sure the holes like actually line up with each other. Yeah. So if I click on this part, yeah, that lines up, right? Yeah, fantastic. So you can like actually bolt this together and make it work. If your bumper is running into your Versa frame, all you have to do is use countersink bolts. If you don't know what counter, here I'll just show you guys what countersink bolts are. Countersink bolts, um, there's bolts that are set inside the material itself, so the surface of the material is like all flat and flush. Um, I can't find a good example. Oh, I actually might have a good example on here. Yeah, yeah. So you can see right here, we use countersink bolts on our gearbox, so it can mount flush with the drivetrain, right? So because it's countersunk here, um, that means if you look at it from a top profile, the head of the bolt doesn't stick out, right? And that's, that's how we mount it flush to the drivetrain. So that's what you can do if you run into that situation. So now we have the ability to bolt this to here, but we haven't been able to bolt this to here. And the way we do that is that we need another set of mounting holes on here. So let's add those. <coughs> I'm going to follow another like really standard pattern, like 0.5 inches away from all edges, like really simple stuff. But I'm not going to pattern it in um, in the 2D sketch. I'm going to pattern it in the 3D model. All right. Now let's finish that. We can do a nice little extrusion here. OK. Now let's do a rectangular pattern along this edge. Flip the direction, let's make it three. Let's save that. Okay, so we if you look at this one, we made a plate that like goes from the base all the way up to the top. We don't really need that. That's not necessary. That's just kind of like too many bolts and too much material and too much weight. <coughs> Excuse me. So all we're really going to utilize are the, the holes in the bottom, these four, and then these four here. So let's quickly make a plate for that. I'm going to go really fast with this. Um, <coughs> all it is is a rectangle, right? So let's just quickly make that. Um, I believe this would be four inches, I think. So it'd be two inches by four inches, probably. I don't know. If we make a mistake, we can always edit the sketch.
Let's make an 8 inch deck plate. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then we're just gonna quickly fill out the corners, you know, just just to make it look nice. Make sure the fab kids don't cut themselves. Apply. X out of that. Let's save this. Let's save as um, add verse frame support plate. Yeah, yeah, that seems good. All right, now let's just add this to here. All right. So let's just add this to both sides. Uh, what was it? The plate? Yeah, this thing. So we put a plate here, put a plate here. Constrain it like that. Let's do a flush constraint to the edge. Remember, always constrain faces. Do not click edges. I hate. Don't, absolutely, like, don't click the edge here and do this. Because if you do that, you're gonna get like really wonky like pivoting just don't do that it creates a lot of issues down the line constrained faces but we don't want to constrain the top face like this I want to constrain actually the holes to each other because that's how we bolt it in real life right so axis to axis all the holes line up <coughs> um oh the mistake I made I'm going to put it too high. It should be on the very bottom one, right? So, to edit a constraint, all you have to do is click on the part, right-click, show relationships. I can delete this, axis constraint, delete. Let's hide them again. Constrain. I actually want it, this plate one to this inner one. Yeah, that's what I want. Apply. And now let's do the same thing on the other side. Alright, this is this seems to be working exactly how I want to. Now the last part we need to do is add the rail itself, right? <coughs> and the rail I'm talking about is this piece of metal. And the only reason you really need this is to to comply against the rule where your bumper needs to be entirely supported by metal like all along the inside. Or like by a robot all along the inside. So currently this bumper has no support in here in this area so if another robot came and just like slammed against here that bumper would start caving in here which is why you need support along the edge and that's how we're gonna add this rail so the first thing we need to do is so this this rail is 0.5 inches by 0.5 inches right we need to create that cut inside these blocks so let's start with this one let's do a 2d sketch all it is, you project geometry, literally all it is is 0.5 by 0.5, hit tab, 0.5, that's all it is. We can cut this out. Cut, extrude the other way, boom, done. Go back here. Um, so the reason it didn't show up is because if you, if I look at it from here, it's probably like that inside corner. Yeah, you can see that it's that inside corner. So all you have to do is open this, let's edit our sketch, delete that, it's going to be the other corner, it should be this one. This is the cut extrusion. Um, double click on the extrusion to fix this. It just selected the wrong profile, so if we go to our profile, hold shift, deselect that, and just click OK. Save that boy. Yeah, that looks good. Now, same thing for this, this situation here. Let's open this. Do a 2D sketch. Cut extrude right into the screen. That looks good. I got lucky on the first try. Let's save this. Wow, I haven't saved this in a while. Now, you might be wondering... Grish, 
How do we actually machine this? We can't make a perfect cut like that. Well, you actually can. If you have, a, all, you, all you really need is a mill. Like, it might look like you need a water jet to cut that perfect corner, but you really need a mill. So, all you have to do is, here, let me draw on this real quick. So, let's say your mill's bit is like this, right? And it's like this. What you want to do is run it. Run so the bit is imagine the bit is spinning in this direction, right? You want to run the bit across across the piece of verse frame like that, and that's how you make that cut. Alright. So I'm gonna hit save real quick. All we have to do is add our piece of half inch by half inch rail. And then I'll quickly explain how it bolts to everything, and then we'll be done for this. So let's make a new part. It's half inch by half inch. Now, this is in fact hollow from the inside. You might be wondering, where did we actually buy this from? Well, if you go to make Master Car, my favorite website, and you look up box tubing. Um, aluminum? Yes, aluminum. And we're going to look at the outside width. We want half by half. So, half an inch? Half an inch. We have two options. And the difference between this one and this one is the material. Right? <coughs> so, I don't really care about the material. I'm just catting this. So, let's click on one of the parts. Go to product detail. I care about what that inside thickness is, and if you look here, it says 1 16th, right? So if I go back to Inventor, all I have to do to represent that is offset this by 1 16th. Something doesn't seem right here. Wall thickness, 1 16th. Did I just type it in wrong? Oh yeah, I did 1 6th, it should be 1 16th. Yeah, that looks good. Now let's extrude it the length of our drivetrain. If I go back, I think it was 24 inches. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. Based from here to here. Yeah, 24. Let's extrude that 24 inches. Hold shift if you mess up and just deselect the inside. Let's save this as bumper rail. Cool. Now, literally, all we have to do is put it into here and figure out how to bolt it to these holes that already exist, right? So, let's place this. Bumper rail. Um, I'm guessing I typed in the length wrong. Yeah, I probably did. So, let's open this. Double click on the extrusion. I did 16. I probably just want to autopilot. I don't know. What is it? Sometimes... My brain goes in different directions. All the wrong directions. So, simple face to face constraints. Just like that. Oh, lost it. Tra track that. We're going to go all the way to the end. And then the only di distance that's left is this one the height. So, we're going to click the bottom side of that. And we're going to attach it to the bottom. So everything fits really neatly. Everything looks cool. Now all we have to do is get that hole to actually bolt. Or like run a bolt in between that hole and this rail, right? Till I actually secure it down. So what we need to do is figure out the distance from here to here. Luckily for us, we did this earlier when we were sketching out the holes that needed to go on our... Yeah, we... We did the same thing here. We just figured out the distance. So if we look at the sketch here, we just said, okay, this is six inches from the end. This is six inches from here. Um, all we have to do is figure out how far the holes are away from the end. So we do a dimension, this hole. Obviously, you're just adding 0.5, but just to confirm, yep, 6.5 inches. So that's the same. That's all we're doing to the rail is just making holes that are at the beginning to mount from here to here, from here to here, here to here, and then of course the end. 
So it's pretty. You can use guess and check, but I mean, it's pretty intuitive. I'm just going point or project geometry. Always project geometry. Don't forget that. Three sixteens as usual. Um, we have one like here. We have one about here. We have one about here. Now the ones from the end are only 0.5 away. Just like that. And then obviously we need to find the height, which is going to be 0.25. These ones are 6.5 like we showed in the drawing earlier. Okay, Coolio. Same thing here. Hit escape, finish sketch, cut extrude. Yeah, cut extrude 24 inches is not really necessary, so we're going to switch that to like 1. Okay, okay. Save that. Hopefully we did it on the right side. Oh, as you can see, we clearly messed something up, but that's okay. It looks like I was just off by 0.5 inches. Um, I probably did the math wrong something somewhere, so that's really easy to edit. You just double click on your sketch. Let's increase that to 7. Finish sketch, save that, and go back. Another 0.5, 7.5. Wow, I was a whole, I was a whole inch off. You guys are probably better than math than me. You can probably figure out what I did wrong, but it's not that big of a problem, right? Cool. So now you can run a bolt from that hole into here, and that'll secure everything together. Now I'd, but now I'd be wondering, Rish, how do you actually stick the bumper onto this rail? Well, what you can do is add holes to the top like that, and then you can put L brackets on your wood and bolt the L brackets to these holes using like wing nuts or something. I think that would be the most effective way to do it. Um, you can take any approach you want. You might want to take, um, maybe your team likes those like, um, what's it called, like push to connect, I don't even know. It's like latches, yeah, yeah. Maybe you like using these things. Whatever it is, you now have a pretty pretty good frame to work off of to build all your bumper support, right? So um, that's it for today's video. Um, I think the next video is going to be going over how to put a belly pan belly pan on your drivetrain to mount all the electronics. All right, that's it. Thank you.